Hello, so we're going to talk about the uh, lens covers on a couple of different cameras. Uh, they're pretty popular on the point and shoot cameras. Obviously not with the DSLRs or uh, cell phone cameras. So the uh, plastic covers on these can get jammed and they might not open fully when you want to take a picture. So they're kind of in the way. Or in some cases uh, they won't open at all or the uh, lens won't come out for uh, focus so the lens can get jammed in or it can get jammed out so we'll take a look at this uh, Panasonic Lumix quickly so you'll see with it that it's got like a heavy plastic front so if this gets hit by something it doesn't actually uh, get deformed and uh, prevent these from opening or closing so uh, I think Panasonic has a better solution to this compared to uh, Canon. So we'll take a look at the Canon camera now. So I've had three different Canon point and shoot cameras. They've all suffered from the uh, same trauma. So they just have a, a very thin aluminum cover on them and they get damaged easily. So I see in some videos what people do is like you can use like a plastic pry bar for opening up a cell phone or you can use just a, a flat screwdriver. You can reach in and bend up these uh, tabs if they're pushed in or you could use a guitar pick even if you need to get that to work again. But in my case uh, what I've been doing is removing the contents because uh, their cameras are too far gone. So I've got a couple of different tools out here. So if this camera was stuck with it in, you'll get like a, a notice on the uh, camera saying that it won't work anymore. This camera has actually been through a bit of trauma here back and forth, but you'll get a note here saying that you can't close the camera and you got to nothing you can do about it. Basically the thing is just turned into a brick. You can't use it anymore. So if that happens you can use uh, just a pair of pliers and turn this and get it out. So you're going to end up uh, damaging this piece a little bit but this is trying to just save your money here as opposed to giving up on it. So the camera doesn't need to have all of those components to uh, work. So you're going to need to go in as far as you can and remove as many pieces. So you're going to take out all of the uh, folding parts. There's going to be a, probably 10 of these plastic pieces. There's going to be a spring on these corners here. Then you need to go one layer deeper and remove the uh, next piece. Because what I found was that after using this camera for a while, after removing only the uh, plastic shutter pieces, was that there's another larger disc that kind of turns sideways. And you'll see in some of my previous videos that there's something kind of covering the edge of my uh, shot in the video. So that's uh, an issue. So you take this off, your camera is going to work again, but you can put it back on. So you'll see that the way these fingers are, they're kind of like opposite of uh, a normal bolt would be like clockwise, counterclockwise, right? So you can put it back in. If you have the camera where it's jammed, where it's partially open, you can use a pair of pliers. Maybe put some tape on the jaws and very gently grab this so you go again counterclockwise and lift it out. So this uh, and then you should try to get the uh, opening horizontal. I don't think it really matters in most cases, but uh, you might as well try because it can get clocked out of position a little bit. So uh, in other videos you'll see people trying to stuff pieces of paper and I'm not sure what the goal is, what you're actually achieving. 
because uh, I've not opened this camera up completely. It looks like you can grab this ring here and open it further, but I haven't uh, done that because this camera still works. It's still a, a pretty good camera. This is an SX620HS. This one's a little bit funny because it's got like a, a manual pop-up uh, flash and it's a really automatic camera with a mono speaker. You can see that's all the selections that you get, so uh, not exactly ideal. But anyway, not really reviewing the camera per se, but uh, if you take this off and pull the uh, front layer of uh, contents out of the camera, you should be able to get your camera to work again and uh, not need to replace it. And uh, if you don't have a Canon, or if you're looking to buy a camera, you should probably look at a different brand if you're going to be hard on the camera. Because like if you just inadvertently bump up into something that you're trying to film, or what have you, or if it bumps into the camera, these are very fragile and they get jammed. Whereas this camera here, uh, which is not used on this channel, just uh, using it as an example of a camera that can uh, do better. With the point and shoots, they're limited to a, a certain file size. I think this one stops filming at two gigabytes. I'm using a DSLR to film this uh, section of video here and it times out at a, a half an hour which is far more than 20 gigabytes. So half an hour is pretty good for one scene like unless you're trying to do like a, a driving video or some long video that you're going to edit later. So uh, that might be another thing to consider if you're looking at doing video. And uh, the zoom is nicer on the uh, DSLR as well. Whereas you might see in some of my videos that I try to zoom in on something, but it's, uh, it's quite slow. It's kind of amazing like how much uh, range of motion that it has. But it's, uh, I just find that it's too slow. So uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully you're able to fix your camera.